So hi everyone, thanks so much for joining us today uh, for your marketing plan for 2022. Before we get started, just one or two housekeeping items. Oh, sticky mouse. Uh, so we'd love you to ask questions and we're using Zoom today. So the chat and Q&A box are the best place to do that. Um, you'll be able to see them at the bottom of your browser. Um, we'll go through all the questions at the end, but if there is one or two that's really pertinent to something that Viv is talking about, um, I'll, I'll just interrupt you, Viv, if that's okay. Absolutely. So my name is Charles Clark. I'm the Marketing Director of BOMA um, and really thrilled to have Viv Brownring of The Gap today. Um, for those of you, I'm sure most of you do know Viv, um, but she co-founded The Gap and before that actually ran her own accounting firm. So she really understands the challenges um, that accountants have and I think is really fantastic, uh, fantastically positioned to talk to us about this today. So um, I'm really excited to see uh, what we've got, Viv. Um, so I'll hand it over to you. Excellent. I think you've got one more slide there, but no worries. Oh, sorry, we can... yeah. <laughs> That's all right. You yeah. go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Want, I don't want to. I don't want to sell a gap. You can do no, it. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, if anyone's not familiar with either the Boma or the Gap, and obviously our partnership, um, we met some years ago, and that was when we were basically building our digital marketing tool for accountants. Um, and while we did have the beginnings of our content library there, when we saw the GAPS business development system, we knew that this would just be a match made in heaven. So the GAPS um, content plus our distribution tool would just mean that you can really uh, maximize and enhance those client relationships, um, help drive growth, and just um, uh, help ensure that when it comes to your marketing activities, efficiency is always um, at the top of mind. Uh, so between the two of us, um, I suppose we provide what we like to call a virtual uh, a marketing campaign in a virtual box. So um, when it comes to building those close relationships um, and also maximizing your ability to prospect for new leads, um, that's kind of the background behind our partnership. And obviously, um, we're thrilled to be speaking to you here today. Great. Hey, thanks, Charles. Well, I'm just going to um, share my screen now and we'll make sure that you can see all good and right. you'll you'll pop the workbook into the chat pane so there is a workbook there if you want to download it um because there are the, the, the marketing template i'm going to show you towards the end of the session is in that workbook and you may want to um use that if you're not a gap member so this is what we're going to cover today um we're going to talk about what marketing really is and try and make it simple um, talk about how you kind of right size your marketing team for your firm, uh, what uh, we can outsource really well, and maybe what's better left in house. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the most successful marketing tactics of 2021 based on what our gap firms are doing, and, and a ton of um, uh, discussion that I have with firms in New Zealand, Australia, UK. Um, and we're going to talk about how you put a practical 2022 marketing plan together. I think it's true to say, it's a good, good thing to throw out here right now at the beginning, is that marketing can get a bit of a bad rap in an accounting firm, firm from some of the directors. And what I mean by that is some directors in an accounting firm kind of consider marketing as a bit of an overhead. You know, where's the return on investment? You know, where is the bang for my pound, if you like? And so it's really important that we understand that uh, marketing does need to produce leads, but that sometimes there isn't, a, there isn't an instant result. We have to sometimes wait for that return on investment to come. Uh, and obviously we'll take some questions, but before we um, kick in, I mean, what is marketing? Um, marketing is really just the communication of information. Uh, we had a fabulous response rate from uh, the pre-work that uh, you all filled in. And we had a couple of firms that said, look, I don't really like standing on the rooftops and saying how great we are. I'm a bit shy about marketing our firm and, and that we provide great service. But if you, if you think about marketing as just being the communication of information, there's a ton of information that you can communicate to clients in a way 
uh, that you're really supporting them and in a way that you're really positioning and marketing your services. So if you put it that way, you're not standing on the rooftop shouting, skiting about how great you are. You're just communicating information. But we have to remember that the purpose of marketing is to create leads. So, uh, and this is where I talk very much about tactical marketing rather than um, long-term strategic marketing. So I, for an accounting firm, I'm very aware that directors are looking for an ROI on their marketing spend very quickly. And so when it comes to putting a marketing plan together, I tend to favor particular for them, particularly for the mid to smaller size firm, a tactical marketing plan, which focuses really in on the next 90 days in the context of the annual business plan, rather than the long term build the brand, you know, three, four, five year branding exercise. We haven't got that sort of time to get an ROI. Um, in smaller firms and of course if you everyone's got a marketing team everyone in the team should be supporting the marketing department but that marketing department even if it's a 0.3 in your firm one leader and of course you need to have a marketing plan uh, which comes down that comes back to the pre-work and I just want to unpack this with you because it's really interesting so across uh, UK New Zealand uh, Australia, we had more than 450 sets of pre-work come back, 450 firms. It was a good slice. We asked the question, do you have a current marketing plan? 52% um, said no, 39% said yes. And this one's interesting. 9% of you said, we don't really know. We're unsure as to we have a marketing plan or not, which of course is kind of amusing when you think about it. So if you're not sure if you've got a marketing plan, something's broken in your communication. And that probably comes back to um, director alignment. But the question for the, the ones that have a marketing plan who say they've got a marketing plan is, is it in writing? Is it a, is it a simple marketing plan on one or two pages? Can you remember the three or four or five goals in that marketing plan? And, and do you pull that marketing plan out regularly and do you update it at the very least every 90 days? Because if you don't do those things, if you don't know what the goals are and you're not updating it, you probably don't have a working marketing plan. The next question we asked Viv, you're on mute. Yes, I managed to get quite <laughs> carried away with the mouse then and uh, managed to mute myself, but I'm back again. We asked you, what's your biggest marketing challenge and ranked uh, from highest challenge down to lowest. Here they are. First one, streets ahead of the rest came in at time. Totally get that. And that's why leveraging um, your marketing efforts by having a great marketing platform like BOMA, and I know many of you in the virtual room are using BOMA and actually getting stock content to embellish the content that you create yourself is important because uh, you know most of us don't have the luxury of having you know a, a full-blown marketing team. Knowing how getting started, execution, the COVID environment it was right up there as well and two, two factors there I guess keeps you damn busy what's happening in the world right now and accounting firms have been absolutely slammed um, however, the COVID environment is a beautiful time for you to be communicating information if we go back to that, um, that definition of marketing. And of course, we need to do that. We, need to, we can't be tone deaf to what's happening around us in the world. Uh, and we've got to do that ethically. But in fact, this environment is a very good time to be marketing good supportive information. Having great content, the budget, Getting leadership alignment. And this is where I always say your business plan comes first and then your marketing plan. So the marketing plan has got to tie in to the business goals in the business plan. And, and of course, resourcing, getting a return on your marketing spend. I totally get that. And a few of you said, look, we're just a bit shy about marketing. We don't really like to to blow our own trumpet, so to speak. But I would say to that, if you don't, blow your own trumpet no one's going to blow it for you necessarily and you're not going to be hearing much music so um, 
you know, we, we all have to get over ourselves at some point there. And I think eventually we all do. Uh, in terms of getting the size of your marketing department right, well, that obviously depends at where, where you're at in the stage of your uh, growth, how much growth you're looking for, how big your firm is. Uh, you may need a, a point two or a point three of a marketing resource. You may need a dedicated full-time equivalent marketing resource. The great thing is that we are absolutely spoiled for choice now because we can actually resource in-house um, we can use a marketing agency to facilitate um, our marketing plan. We uh, to to uh, to do a, a brand refresh, to build our website, to refresh our website, SEO, all of those things. So we've got a lot of choice. We can keep it onshore. We can take some stuff offshore. So a great example of taking offshore here at the Gap, we're actually using Fiverr to actually um, uh, to produce uh, five or six short marketing videos, which will be animated um, on our website. And, and that's just, we have not got time to produce that in-house. We don't, we have the capability, uh, but it's literally um, a, a third of the spend that we'd be spending in-house. So that that's a very effective spend for us. Uh, we can look at stock content solutions. There's lots of them out there. You've got others in the UK as well. We're not the only content solution. Uh, but I, for the Gap members out there, just remember when you get into that premium library that the Gap has in the BOMA platform, we got more, hundred, more than 450 blogs and articles in there. Some really good stuff, really um, deep content, not generic. And of course, we've got 25 webinar and seminar kits. And so education marketing is a, is a very strong marketing strand for accounting firms. So you can't do it all yourself unless you're a big firm with a full-blown marketing department. And of course, um, you don't necessarily have content writers sitting in the team. Uh, so specialist education marketing solutions such as webinar and, and event kits, that's something we do here at The Gap as well. And of course, having a digital marketing platform such as BOMA, and I know that a few firms out there are using other marketing platforms in the UK, um, and they all work, they're all great to push out, uh, you know, a post across several social platforms and to get um, EDMs out quickly uh, and to be able to really make them look beautiful as well. There's a lot of stuff we can outsource very effectively. Um, we can um, outsource the facilitation of our strategy, but we need to be deeply involved because that strategy needs to align to our business goals. We can obviously outsource um, brand and design, um, our website and some social, although I do believe that uh, some of those social posts should be kept in house. We can also, as we do here at The Gap, we can outsource um, some of the, the, the assets um, that we're going to put up on our website and, and slice and dice in other ways. And, and we should probably do that because we don't have the proficiency in-house. So um, videos are a great example. And there's a massive difference sometimes between having those done in-country and offshoring those. Targeted lead gen campaigns. Search engine optimis optimization, that's a, that's a specialist skill. And um, running an event, we can certainly outsource that. And, and we've, we've got firms who've <clears throat> outsourced their first couple of webinars, for example, educational webinars, before they bring it in-house so that they know what they're doing. But there are there's certain things we need to keep in-house. Those in-the-moment social posts, uh, dynamic content, and that can be stuff about which makes our, our business human, which is a very important part of marketing. Things that are happening in the business, things that are happening with clients, things that are happening uh, in a special events, your, your special um, moments for your team members. Dynamic content, which is about what's important to clients right now, sometimes bound around legislation or support in, in this particular time. Those aren't things we uh, outsource very effectively because by the time um, you, you get it out to the outsourced organization, then you may as well have done it yourself and, and the moment is kind of gone. So when it comes to ever um, 
uh, evergreen content, well, that's something that, you know, you can get in stock content very well. But if it's dy dynamic content, you probably want to be producing that in-house. Actually delivering the education, delivering the webinars, uh, delivering those events when you get a chance to do face-to-face -face events. Sure, you can bring in additional speakers and that's fantastic. But this is your brand. Um, this is your marketing opportunity. You're the hero. So, you know, start off by delivering uh, via the, the webinar because it is the introvert's paradise. You say, you know, if those of us who aren't experienced presenters, it's a really safe place to start. And never try and outsource somebody coming up with your core purpose statement or your values. And believe me, I've seen it done and it doesn't work. <clears throat> those things have to come from deeply from within. Uh, those things are very deeply under the surface for you, for you as a business owner um, and your fellow directors, and ultimately for your team and then out to your clients. So if you try and outsource that stuff without being deeply involved, um, it's not going to work. Um, in terms of the things that we've seen kind of been really, really successful um, in 2021, uh, and this is going to surprise you because, um, and there's a massive digital marketing, uh, you know, flavor in here, even though these five things uh, up on the slide right now might, might not make that obvious. But at the end of the day, the client experience, even when you are not face to face, absolutely wins. Now, sure, you can't hand your client a flat white um, at an online meeting, but there are so many things that firms have done to make their online meetings seamless, organized, uh, a good experience for the clients, rather than just another Zoom um, where you turn up two minutes after the client does and there doesn't seem to be a purpose to the meeting and it all drifts somewhat. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about that shortly. But the client experience is hands down one of, one of your most successful marketing tactics. And that's every, um, every communication you have with a client, every touch point, every email, every online meeting, every face-to-face -face meeting, um, even um, sending out an invoice. So, if, you know, I, I challenge you to look at all those touch points and see how you can improve them because that's what gets clients talking and that's so much where the referrals come from. The COVID response is really interesting because, you know, I'm in contact with a lot of accounting firms, UK, New Zealand, Australia, um, and what I see is, is, is two quite dis distinct responses when it comes to the digital response. Uh, by email or on the website. First of all, I see very generic responses, such as, you know, I'm super busy at the moment uh, because of the COVID environment. You may not hear from me for four days. Uh, by the way, here's some links to some, some government information in terms of support packages. Now, that's very generic. That's very impersonal. That's very, I'll come to you when I'm not busy. Uh, I see the opposite end of the spectrum where uh, firms are actually very being very targeted in their digital response up on their website and by email. And instead of just directing clients to links, they've distilled the information for them, made it um, digestible for a small business and, and really helped them rather than expecting them to wade through a whole lot of stuff that they don't necessarily understand and haven't got the appetite for. So I've seen, you know, quite different responses and in one it has a really good marketing angle and one um, not so much. Running outstanding meetings is one of your most successful marketing tactics and I'm sure that the gappies in the room really know what I mean by actually making sure that clients come to that meeting, whether it's online or face-to-face, -face, um, they come with a purpose, they've done pre-work for every meeting that forms the agenda uh, and we don't drift off, we, we don't come up to a meeting of discovery and we end up with actionable minutes. So there is absolute value in that and, and clients will talk about that and, and you'll convert um, uh, uh, prospective clients, future clients, two clients just off the back of a better initial 
meeting and that you see the close alignment between marketing and sales. Content of value, there's, there's, there's so much content out there and so much of it is so generic. And, and I, I suppose Twitter is probably my least favorite um, social platform. The one I thought I haven't been on Twitter, Charles, for a couple of months now. I just don't know if I can be bothered. Um, and, you know, we see just this really bland, generic content, some of it quite obvious. We take an op opposite view to content of value here at The Gap. And this is why, as part of the premium um, library that we've got up on the Bioma platform, we often put out content pathways. So I'll give you an example of a co content pathway. Cash flow is an issue for many businesses, I think you'd agree. Uh, whether you're growing, uh, you know, for whatever reason. And so we've got a content pathway and they're called, you know, the seven causes of poor cash flow. So it kicks off with a general overview of the seven causes of poor cash flow. And then it feeds down into the first cause, so on and so forth, through to the last one and a wrap up. And so you can schedule those posts to go out over the course of maybe three weeks, maybe four weeks, maybe leading up to an event like a webinar on cash flow freedom, for example, and you're actually serving up content of value. You're actually serving up actionable education. Your clients have got some tips, a checklist of things they can do at the end of that um, article. And so they can actually go and take some action in their business. So I talk about actionable content rather than just generic content. So make sure that the content that you're pushing out um, is of value rather than clogging up um, the universe because there's a ton of it. I want to talk about um, the planning hierarchy uh, before we actually go in and, and, and look at what I would call a tactical uh, marketing plan. Um, so I guess uh, I, I'm going to I start with the annual business plan. I, I know that some of you in the room would prefer to think at the, the top of the hierarchy of planning would probably be the strategic plan, which takes a three to five year view of, of life. But I think it would be fair to say that less than 10% of accounting firms and probably less than 5% of businesses um, overall actually take a three to five year view um, of planning. Um, so for many businesses and for many accounting firms, for most accounting firms, they've got an annual business plan in place. And I hope that all of you have an annual business plan in place. If you don't, you should, because your marketing plan needs to absolutely align to your goals, which are locked away in your annual business plan. Otherwise, you haven't got alignment between the marketing department and, and the directors of the organization. And that's something that came up in the pre-work. So your annual business plan, um, why you exist, um, what you want to achieve over the next 12 months and how you're going to do that in the form of cascading goals, one year goals, 90 day goals and actions you're going to take within that 90 days to achieve those goals. So the, the annual business plan comes first. Um, and then uh, you build the marketing plan. Now, it's, I, I, I can't remember who wrote this, um, but it's so true. And, and they said, write your values and in ink and your business plan in pencil. And I totally agree with us. And a marketing plan is a great example of, um, of, of, of using pencil because a marketing plan in many ways is even more dynamic than the business plan because some things work in the marketing world and then they stop working or they don't work at all or they work fantastically and we want to do more of it. So our marketing plan is, is a very dynamic thing. Needs to be aligned to the business plan. Um, and, you know, many of you will have a growth goal in your marketing plan and you'll need to think about, you know, where are you looking for the growth from? Is it that from existing clients or is it from new to business clients? Is it a combination of the two and, and, and how we're gonna achieve that? Um, some of you are, in a, are happy with perhaps where you're at from a growth perspective, you're getting more modest levels of growth. You may be focused more on retention. You may have a growth goal and a retention goal. You may also have a, a goal around a brand refresh, um, around um, 
uh, you know, a, a, a absolutely um, bringing your website to life because a website is there to, to bring clients. You want to get traffic to your website. You want to serve them up content of value. And then you want to engage them. And then off the back of uh, your marketing plan is going to be a ton of marketing activity and you're going to run some act act campaigns, you'll take action, you'll sort out the timing of those. But uh, campaigns in the marketing world, they're a very fluid thing and, and they're changing constant, constantly. Here at The Gap, Chelsea and I, we're updating the market plan, marketing plan every month. And that stuff sometimes comes to us, the opportunities come to us. Um, and, and so the marketing plan is never in ink. It's never set in stone. Okay, so let's, let's look at a, a really, um, a, a really um, straightforward tactical marketing plan. This template actually sits in the gap um, in the marketing plan bridge. And I know that some of you um, online today are using that, this tactical marketing planning process. Um, for those of you who aren't, make sure you download that workbook and you'll be able to see it in there um, and you'll be able to create, create your template yourself. So um, here we are creating a, a marketing plan and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a confession right now. I'm going to apologize. You're going to see some Kiwi dollar signs in here. Don't worry about that. Um, this is just an example. I didn't build a UK one. So we're going to start with our purpose leading small business owners to achieving the three freedoms. And then we're going to, we're going to then um, identify our ideal client. And in fact, that's something that we do in the business planning process as well. So as part of your business planning process, you should be identify, identifying your ideal client uh, and what your value proposition is for that ideal client. Um, so I'll just... Uh, go back one and so you've got uh, in here I've identified the ideal client in terms of what they aspire to do you might talk about a particular um, group of industries that you service uh, a particular sector or sectors that you service here we're talking about general business clients across the spectrum but they have aspirations to grow so they're probably not necessarily sole traders um, Compliance services are a given, but they're not the main event. And we've set a kind of a, a level in the sand pit in terms of what we want their annual turnover to be. Now, it doesn't mean we're not going to work for clients outside of that range. It just means we're in particular targeting these clients. And so our website will mirror that, our content will mirror that, our marketing campaigns will mirror that. Um, and, and we'll want to be bringing traffic to our website in that sand pit rather than perhaps at a lower level or a um, lower growth aspiration level. The services we'll be providing and we've decided to flip it on its head here. Um, we are <clears throat> focused on advisory services and uh, at tax and compliance it's a given we need to do it uh, but it's, it's, it's just something that we do. A unique selling point, and you can see I've grabbed some um, Japanese here, Gap clients, help our clients achieve time, money, and mind freedom by providing advice and education to, to improve and grow their business. Because not everyone wants to grow their, their business. Some people just want to fix their margins or um, their cash flow. Our positioning, we're going to provide high value advisory services and an efficient compliance service through our commitment to our core values. Uh, our promotion strategy is going to be educational events, um, content pathways, downloadable resources to actually create some marketing gravity so that we really position these services and that we can go in and engage. Uh, we're going to really be focused on those touch points, those meeting touch points. Um, and we're also building a bit of a client community where clients can actually share ideas and, and resources. Um, and now we're going to come into the second part of um, the marketing plan. We've got a budget. Uh, we're going to do a brand refresh. We're going to spend a little bit of money on um, education, marketing, uh, sponsorship. Uh, we're not expecting necessarily to get an ROI on that, but we're putting it in the budget. 
um, we're, do, we're going to do a, a bit of a, a website up, update, um, refresh a few pages, and so we're going to get some um, contracted resource in to help with that. Uh, we've got some one-year KPIs, uh, which are really going to drive marketing activity to drive those marketing goals uh, in the form of leads, which I'll show you in a moment. So we're talking about the number of events we're going to run. Um, um, this particular firm uh, hasn't been running an annual accounts review meeting. They stopped doing that a couple of years ago. They got busy, so they just started pinging out the annual accounts um, by email. And of course, they've kind of stopped engaging their client through that um, education process, which is fundamentally part of that annual accounts review meeting. So they're going to get that back in place so that they increase engagement, so that they've got a stronger relationship um, that they can market off. Uh, they're going to put in place um, some free business review meetings at the gap, we call that the complimentary client review. And they've identified how many they're going to run um, in, in that year, which is not a huge amount in year one. They're, these KPIs need to be achievable. Um, and uh, we're looking to get 35 new to business leads with an 80% conversion. And once again, in a tactical marketing plan, you see this really close alignment between marketing and sales. Um, in a perfect world, we, we don't have a marketing department and a sales department in an accounting firm. Often those two are meshed together and the people providing um, the highest level of advice are often the best marketing and sales engines in the marketing firm without even realizing it. Even, you know, you, you sell every day the need to pay tax um, in, its, in its most fundamental form of, of sales. Um, and uh, getting 15 downloadable business resources up on the website it could be a combination of videos, um, recut videos from your educational webinars, um, downloadable checklists, um, whatever. There's a ton of resources um, that are there in the GAP portal for you to do that with. Um, and then, of course, we've come down to our 90-day 90, 90 goals. We've got five goals there. And each of those goals, um, you know, some of them working together are going to drive those KPIs, those five KPIs that we just looked at before. So we're getting, we're crunching down to the numbers now. We are crunching down to the activity, the, the tactical um, activity to actually move the, le the needle because we want to see a return on our investment. And this is where um, I get really quite frustrated when, um, you know, people view marketing as an overhead. It's not an overhead. The purpose of marketing is to drive leads. And there are aspects of marketing where it's hard to tangibly calculate the ROI, such as a brand refresh. How do you calculate the, um, the ROI on that. Yes, sure, you can measure website traffic before you do the brand refresh, and then you can measure it afterwards, but there could be a ton of other things that contributed to that increase in web traffic. So it's pretty hard to measure the ROI on some aspects of marketing. However, when it comes to activity, these are marketing activities, it can get pretty simple to actually measure your ROI. And so for marketing departments out there, if, if there are marketing people online today who are a little bit tired of being regarded as an overhead, I feel your pain, um, make sure you've got some really tactical aspects in your marketing plan so that you can prove that ROI and you can show what works and keep doing it. So here we have five goals, the marketing KPIs that they're driving um, and the numbers, um, the activities, who's got to do what and when. And so that's it, guys. It's not 30 pages. If you can't remember your five marketing goals, um, then you know, you're probably not going to do the things that are in your marketing plan. There's too, too much in there. So that marketing plan is going to come out uh, potentially every month, at the very least every quarter, and you're going to be resetting those goals before the next quarter and just keep that marketing engine going. 
So when it comes to um, getting that ROI, you've really got to measure that. And so you've got to make sure that um, you're doing that uh, review of your uh, marketing plan at least every quarter and that you're refreshing those KPIs. And those KPIs, they look, they have to be measurable. Um, you know, you've, you, you, there's not much point setting a KPI that says um, uh, client satisfaction if you can't measure it. You, you, you've got to find a way to measure it, whether it's the net promoter score before or after, whether it's a rolling survey to your clients. You've actually got to be able to measure it so that you can show um, the return on investment because every client, if it's retention, for example, every retirement, look at the lifetime value of a client. So retention is, a, is an example of a KPI that you can measure. So make sure those KPIs are measurable. Um, and you can prove them. Scheduled activities, constant and consistent. So, for example, you know, um, uh, post, posting on social media, media month, once a month, that, that's not going to work. That's not going to move the needle. That's not going to help reposition your services. It's not really going to contribute very much to your marketing plan. Constant and consistent. And in marketing, I think you almost have to get to the point where you feel you're over communicating and you probably still aren't quite communicating enough. But we have to, we have to get over that feeling of um, over communication. And this is why we've, as much as possible, we've got to make sure that our, our emails, um, uh, our, our social campaigns are as targeted as possible so that the right people are getting the right information so that we're not just blasting emails and, and posts out there. Um, and, then, and then test and measure. Uh, and it's, it, it's really interesting. We see um, firms who get fantastic results from, for example, education marketing, uh, you know, building up their social posts, building up their content pathways um, and, and their blogs and articles they're pushing up prior to events. And then we see firms who say they're getting a low return on investment right through to firms who say they're getting a massive return on investment. And when you compare those two firms, what you find is the firms who aren't getting a good return on that investment um, and that's time and money combined, that their marketing isn't constant and consistent and their events aren't constant and consistent. So naturally, they're not getting that ROI. It's not part of their DNA. It has to become, become part of your DNA to be constant and consistent. And reset. Okay, so Charles, I'm sure we have some questions. I hope we've got... Um, plenty of time for questions, and I hope we've got some there. Uh, so we, we've answered, I've just answered a couple of questions that were sort of direct questions. So um, uh, if you do have any questions, please let us know. And I, I thought I'd just kick us off Viv, with um, a couple of, uh, I suppose, responses that I was thinking about um, uh, when we asked the question, what are your challenges? Um, and, and these aren't to sort of pick on anyone, but I just thought a good discussion points. And, and one was, you know, too many nice to do's. And I thought that was an interesting perspective around too many what, Charles? Too many, too, many too many nice to do's. Oh, um, yeah. And I thought, well, actually, in, in some ways, you know, that, that to me sounds a little bit like uh, one view of marketing, which is, you know, it's nice to do, not necessarily a need to do. And I was just thinking, back to some research that we've seen, which is in these COVID times, um, what sm uh, small businesses are really looking for their, from their accountant more than they have ever looked for them before is communication support. So even if you're um, in, a, in a firm or a practice where you're thinking, okay, um, you know, marketing, nice to do, that, that's fine. It's, it's, it's sort of more than we wanna do. But think about your current clients and you know what you can be doing to support them, and and that's actually as Liz said, that's communication and where marketing comes in, um, and and that is that's more than a nice to do. That's the difference between you being a fabulous, supportive, um, engaging partner, uh, and and sort of and and the alternative, which is 
um, <clears throat> in, in the research that I've seen was much more likely to sort of lead to conditions where that person or that business was likely to churn. So I thought that was an interesting point. Oh, uh, it's a very interesting point, and it's a it's a unfortunately, sadly, it's a it, it is a commonly held view of marketing, um, uh, and it's um, yeah, it's it's an interesting view, um, and and I understand that I I I get where that comes from. Um, and this is what I'm about to say is not anecdotal. Mm -hmm. The number of gap firms that have said to us that their growth, and this is right across our three main territories and big time in the UK, that the amount of growth they've had during COVID because those clients that have come to them just weren't getting support. They, they weren't being informed as to what on earth they needed to do and what was, was going on. Um, and the support that they could get and, and, and lock into. Um, and, and, I, and, and the other piece of uh, absolute, the, the wonderful thing, I mean, this, it's not, not a great time for anyone, but one of the great things that I've heard from accountants is that I really understand now how much my clients need me. I've always known that, but I really absolutely get it. And also that they feel that their clients really get it now, how much they need them. So I, I, marketing is, is the life, uh, it's part of the lifeblood of every business. And the other thing I'd say is that if you're not marketing in an accounting firm, then how on earth can you understand your clients? How can you have empathy for your clients? Your clients have to market every day of the week. You know, imagine your clients in retail, they've got a market. So, you know, we need to understand marketing so that we can be better business leaders. I, I, I feel quite strongly about that and mm. quite passionately about that. But I actually believe that marketing is just communicating information passionately because you care. Um, and there is so much potential in your existing client base, even if you don't get a brand new client. But I, I actually believe that uh, firms that market well, and I, I'm talking about ethically, and um, they're congruent with their values. They're not saying all this grandiose stuff that they don't deliver on. They're, they're speaking truth, and it's coming from their core purpose and their values that they win. I actually believe that, that they will win the game. Actually, and, and that, well, that sort of bled into uh, another question which is how, and, and thanks very much, Alec, for this question, how would you market to existing clients other than webinars? So great question, thank you. Oh, well, you know, that if, think about the touch points. Every single email, because uh, uh, here's the thing, your website, are your existing clients coming to your website much? No. What's going to drive them to your website? Your, your, your website is more of a front door due diligence process for future clients. Would you agree with that, Charles, that most of the traffic coming to your website is potential clients rather than existing clients? Yeah, most likely. Yeah, yeah. right. So the only way to market to your, um, to your existing clients is by talking to them and communicating with them. So every single email, every single meeting, every single online meeting, and so I'm just, I'd love to know. So every meeting you have is, is a marketing opportunity. And, and you don't imagine yourself sitting there with a loud hailer going, we're the best, we're the greatest. Marketing is about helping people and communicating information. And you do that by finding out what their challenges are, what the opportunities are, and how you can work together better. But just, you do that by asking questions and finding actually, out you know, uh, where the pain points are. So if you're not, you know, if you're not, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely fascinated to know why that firm says other than running events, I'd, I'd like to know what their worry or beef is with running events. Is it because they're a bit shy? Is it because they've never done it before? Is it because they just don't want to do it? What is it? Or is it because they think people are wary of webinars? What is it? Yeah, I'd really love to know. Actually, um, one, one thing uh, we have seen a lot 
uh, gained a lot of popularity in the last <clears throat> 18 months was Q and A's. And yeah. so these aren't these aren't sort of you don't have to promote them in the same way that you maybe do a webinar. But these were run by a lot of accounting firms, and their clients knew that every Friday at 12:30 or Tuesday at three o'clock for half an hour they could come on, and then they could just ask you questions. And it wasn't build time. This was obviously a place where you're giving value, and they get to if they want to ask questions, they can. If they just want to see what other people are saying. They can, but it's a it's a place for support, but it's also where you can solve people's problems, you can learn about their pain points. And then the great thing is that um, you then start that conversation that you know starts in maybe a group setting. So you're reaching one to many, which is a great use of your time, but then you can follow up or they can follow up with you and be like, oh, you know, that that cash flow issue that we were talking about, I, I've got something I'd like to sort of share with you in private. Um, you know, not not within that group and, and sort of let's take it from there. So totally. I mean, you're not going to call this a webinar to your clients. It's a it's a it's an online session and you can run it however you like. It can be a targeted piece of education. And this is what we are and so you're going to deliver some education um, online or it could be just a Q&A session. I've seen and there are a lot of gap firms doing this. It could be literally a tech thursday it could be questions on tech on zero it could be anything um and it's it's highly leveraged and you're you're actually what you're doing is you're communicating information you're helping you're positioning what your firm is great at you can also involve other team members so for example that that tech thursday you may not want to run it as a director, you may want to get one of your young guns to do that. There's a ton of ways you can position this. There's no rules. One of the most beautiful things about marketing, Charles, is within the realms of human decency <laughs> and being ethical, which we always believe in and subscribe to, there are no rules. So it's it's a beautiful blank sheet of paper. And I think... Um really uh, aligned to that is you will have a really good idea about your clients so what what they're going to be comfortable with you know are your clients um comfortable with coming to an online meeting maybe they are maybe they're not so you sort of you know as you say you you will know your clients you will understand what they're going to be comfortable with what forums they're going to best uh best kind of identify and and sort of engage with so you know take that knowledge that you already have and then apply it as viv said with the feeling that you can do anything in marketing uh um and actually a good point from one of the attendees mark thank you saying you know you can always bring in uh an outsourced person so as viv was saying you might want to get someone else within your organization or you know we see a lot of people teaming up with associations and so they bring in a guest presenter i mean a guest presenter is a fabulous thing um, and, and in a way, that's what Viv and I have done here tonight. Um, you know, Viv comes on as a guest presenter and it makes my job a lot easier. So if, if you have maybe there's a legal firm or a local bank or a local retail association, you could partner with them. They'll do the majority of the presentation. Um, and the, the brilliant thing is, is that you've then delivered value to your clients. I mean, a great, great example of that, um, Charles, is um, on Thursday, we've got a guest presenter um, uh, from an, a specialist. The thing about guest presenters is you can get some specialists in. Mm -hmm. They're going to be in areas that you're never going to specialize in, right? So um, we've got an HR specialist coming in on Thursday to a session. We've got hundreds of firms coming to it in New Zealand. It's, unfortunately, it's New Zealand specific. And it's, it's all around some pretty major changes happening uh, in employment law and uh, around mandatory vaccination. So, um, you know, that's that just takes the pressure off us. It's a nice little value add. It, it keeps our community engaged and it's marketing. Now, the other thing I'd just say about if you're running any online sessions, whether it's you delivering content, whether it's somebody else delivering content or whether you're just running a Q&A or a general thing, um, record it. So when you you most of you are using Zoom, press record. Um, at the end of the session, you can uh, uh, top and tail it, clean out the you know the ums and ahs at the beginning, and you might cut it up into five or six videos so they're nice and short. 
um, you've now got some downloadable assets for your website. You can gate that content if you want to. Don't gate or don't, by gate, I mean um, that a lead has got to leave their, their um, email and, and, and org name, et cetera, behind before they can download the content. Those forms are easy to set up. Don't gate all of your content because it can be a bit annoying if it's all gated, but it is a way, a good way to get leads. So every time you run some sort of online event, you've created a downloadable asset. You've created another marketing asset, so um, which you'll get to repurpose over and over and over again. The other thing I'd say is that if you are running educational events and you're presenting or someone else is presenting, not everyone wants to come to the event. Some people want to digest content in their own way, at their own pace, on their own terms. And so they will listen to the recording. So um, people do things their own way. Yeah. Hmm. Um, just thought I'd read out a, a really quick comment. I think we've just got a minute or two left. Uh, the day you stop marketing is the day your firm goes into decline because all you are then focusing on is preserving what you already have. But over time, totally. your clients will leave, retire, move to new accountant, business closures, etc. So marketing is essential, not optional. It is um, essential. I more. It's it's essential to any business, and um, you know, with all the succession work that I've done in, in my previous life, and still occasionally do for accounting firms, I often see Charles. You know. Um, They've been going for a number of years now, you know, the, the clients tend to be a similar age to the partners, give or take five years. Um, it's not always the case, but it's often the case. And so you see uh, the clients get to a certain age and then the, the business plateaus. And then we know what happens after plateau, it's, it goes down in decline. If you're not replenishing those clients that you lose through natural attrition, um, then you are you're declining. So I totally agree with that comment. And I actually believe that, you know, we, many of us, most of us as, as accounting firms, doesn't matter where we are in the world, we say we're business advisors. How can we be business advisors if we don't understand a little bit about marketing and if we don't practice what we teach and preach? So I think we are duty bound to actually understand the function of marketing, even if it's just to stand in our client's shoes from time to time. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Any other questions before we wrap up? Uh, no, I think we've come to, to, to the end. Thank you so much for your questions, guys. That was fantastic. Just um, some next steps. I'm, I want to go to a closing slide because I think it's really, really important in, in a, another statement about marketing, which I love. If... Um, if you want to do a free trial of BOMA or The Gap, jump on our websites, um, go and do that. that, that's great. If you're a Gap firm and you haven't started accessing our premium content on the BOMA platform, please make sure you contact us here at The Gap and get your unlock code to do that. There are more than 450 articles up there. It's great content, it's beautiful content, and it's gonna save you a ton of time. It's not your entire content solution, of course it's not, but it's a good start. And don't worry about other people using the same content, customize it, um, change the intro, change the outro, change the title, swap out images, run your digital voice over it so it sounds like you, it's still going to be better than starting from scratch. And something to leave you with, marketing is really just about sharing your passion. So what are you passionate about? So yeah, we should all be passionate. I'm sure we are all passionate about caring about our clients and caring about the success of small business. So we should be, we should be blowing our own trumpet because if we don't, we're not going to hear any music. So, um, but that doesn't mean you're skiting. It doesn't mean you're yelling from the rooftops. It just means you're being passionate. A um, couple of weeks ago, Charles, Friday, not last Friday, but the Friday before, our government announced uh, a massive package uh, because of the lockdowns in Auckland, 70 something days now uh, been locked down. And, uh, and, and that's um, funding uh, for business advisors to. Um, help their small business clients. One of our firms sent out the most beautiful um, email to their clients saying, 
we're so stoked. I, you know, there's there's this big pot of money here to help you um, get your plan in place, and we want to help you do that. It was not salesy. It was all about the clients, and it was just they really distilled it down, the information down, and they they said openly, we're so excited that this opportunity is there and that this these funds are there for you to access. So get in there and access them. So, uh, I mean, they were really passionate about that because they're passionate about their clients surviving. So um, I think that's a lovely place to end the session today. Oh, and um, Viv, sorry, can I just interrupt you before we do end? I just sure. realized I missed out one question, which is actually a really good one. To reintroduce webinars, which would you recommend right now as we approach year end? Seven ways to grow redefining success, three essential tools or something else. As we um, approach 2022, I'd like to get them. Yeah, uh, um, um, redefining success is a really good one. I, I you know, it's, um, it's very pertinent to where we are all in the world at the moment. I'm sure just as all of us here have redefining what have been redefining what success means to us personally. Um, uh, certainly a lot of business owners are right now looking at, you know, the hours they're working, um, the profits they're making, um, you know, what their families go through just because they own businesses. And some are actually saying they don't want to make as much money. They actually want their time back. So redefining success is a really good one. Three essential tools is a really good one as well because it positions the three essential tools in business, which, of course, is the business plan, the forecast, and having decent reports with some sort of accountability framework, which hopefully is you looking over their shoulder and, and making sure they do what they say they're going to do. So um, those are really good ones. Those two are ex excellent ones coming up to the start of the financial year because a good time to get your plan in place is before obviously the kickoff of the financial year. Um, there's there's uh, a couple of others that position business planning as well in there, but those are two good ones to start with. Fantastic. Okay, well, thanks, guys. Hey, thanks, Charles. Thanks for thanks for staying up late. And um, likewise, yeah. I'm going to slip home and have a Milo. I'm hoping that the <laughs> Milo will counteract the caffeine that I had to have just before we kicked off. It'll do something anyway. Yeah, well, brilliant. Um, and thank you all for your time. I hope you have a really uh, great day. Um, yeah. And we'll look forward to seeing you on the next one. And we'll send out a recording of this tomorrow. Yeah. And for all you gappies out there, um, lovely, lovely to have you on the line. And Mark and I are so determined to get out there in June next year. That's just a little hint. So there you go. Um, we hope to actually see you in 2022. Yeah. Brilliant. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Okay. Take care and bye for now.